Hello everybody, we are here with John Hanks, who is the founder and managing director of the International Coaching Academy here in Liverpool. He offers courses of uh, coaching and many others about personal development and professional. And he has been delivering uh, his uh, teachings all around, all around the world. Australia, Africa and Kenya, right? In India, Correct, yes. Abu Dhabi. Spot on. So I am very happy to have him here today. And if you want to know more about him, follow us. Okay, John, first of all, tell us about your trajectory. You were first uh, uh, regional director of uh, Royal Sun Alliance. Alliance yes, mm -hmm. yes. And then you decided to become, to create the International Coaching right, Academy. Yes, How yes. was that transition? When did you decide? Well, it was to be a regional director of, of any industry, any business. You've got to work hard, you've got to study, you've got to have skills, you've got to inspire people. And when the time had come, when it was my time to leave the Royal Sun Alliance, there was over 1,500 people. I didn't know what to do with me life. I was walking around in the mental fog, and I met this very old shareholder who was over the Royal Sun Alliance. And he said, come here, John Haynes. And I said, oh, he's going to tell me off. And he said, now listen, mark my words. He said, when an educated person dies with all the skills, failures, successes and all the knowledge it's like a library burning down with all the books in it it's gone forever never let your library burn down and that's what made me open up international coaching academy i had all the skills the experience the failures and i wanted to share it with other people before my library burned down and that was 20 years ago yeah 20 odd years ago yes yes so now you are offering not only in person courses but also online courses online well? courses yeah we offer courses to get people out the comfort zone most people in life are walking around them with mental fog they've got so many opportunities but they don't want to learn they don't want to learn valuable skills and knowledge so we offer courses that make people think get off the backside start working get promotion earn more money but most people i want to stay in my comfort zone coasting through life hoping that somebody's going to promote them or come to the business and it doesn't happen anymore so we offer courses that straight away gives you skills and knowledge and also we all offer online courses so they can develop themselves in the comfort of their own own, their own office so it's all around the world doing this well, actually, I'm one of uh, his students. You certainly did. So I got you the master course certificate. Good. And you have the it. discipline, the willpower to do it. Thank you, John. You're very good. Well, you have traveled a lot. Uh, what are your favorite places in the world? Favorite places? Well, the places I've been to, we started coaching and mentoring in Africa. That we, that we, we, we were in this village in Kenya called Kikinkambala, and we noticed the kids were starving to death. The, they were, the straw roofs were leaking all the time. There was no education there. They were taking responsibility for their own education, their own food. Kids are seven or eight. So we got involved with this village. We started coaching the elders, giving them hope and belief. And the youngsters, we started to teach them with accelerated learning how to study correctly. Not in our schools and universities. They just study with the left brain. And that's why they're always stressed off. Well, we teach all over the world, especially these Kenyan children, how to really study with the right and left brain and how to pass exams and give them hope and belief. So that's been going on for way over 20 years. I'm still I was, doing it. I was, uh, I think it was challenging to teach the, these kids in Kenya. Yes. Suppose, because of the language first. That's right. And, and also the culture, right? So yeah. it's very challenging, I guess. Yes. And also you have uh, taught in India. In India, Australia. yes. We've been to India for many years. And once again, we've noticed the difference in India, it's the matter, there's 1.4 billion people, but 50% of them are under the age of 25. But these youngsters in India, they don't have time to go drinking, go to the subway and watch television every night, football. They study, 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 because if they don't study, they're not gonna get work out there and they're gonna be in serious trouble. So we were in India, in all the universities and colleges, teaching them how to be a coach, how to be a leader, take responsibility for life, and they used to turn up in hundreds. In this country, you got to drag them by the scruff of the neck because 
not taking responsibility. But in the end, Africa, we know there's a big difference in, in, in people's thoughts about education and learning. That's why we're in there a lot. We all have moments uh, that we feel down and uh, that we don't feel uh, maybe good enough and like uh, it's too high, the, the goals. Um, in those kind of moments, probably you have had some kind of these kind of moments, what do you do and what do you recommend the people to do? When people are down, they've got to stand back and take responsibility. It's their life, it's their future, it's their education. And the only way we have a hundred billion brain cells, then the only way to get yourself motivated, having goals, have a mission in life, have a vision. And then once you have a goal and a vision, what skills and knowledge do I need to have to achieve that? But most people want to win the lottery. They want to think the boss is going to give them promotion. It's not like that anymore. Life is cruel. But they say yeah, the future belongs to the learner. And they say we have 100 billion brain cells, but the average human being only uses one to two percent of the brain cells. And the brain's there to help us grow, be the best, earn money, be more healthy. So we teach people when they're down, when they're fed up, have your vision, have your goals, and then find out what skills you need to achieve all that. And it works. People can suddenly get motivated. That is the mindset of a coach and also usually for a business person. Everybody's got to take responsibility in life. Unfortunately, most people don't want to. I wonder also, well, you put a lot of energy in your courses. You, you do like a performance and uh, like conversations yeah, yeah. and stories. Uh, what are your nutrition habits to keep this energy yes. and keep healthy as well? Well, as you can imagine, a 50 next birthday joke. You've got to be in a habit with your health. If you want the best out of your life, the saddest thing is people work hard all the way through their life. They never look after their health, their fitness. And when they come to a certain age, just when they want time with the grandchildren and take the partner away on holiday, the health then starts. Because they've abused the body all those years, they think they can get away with when they're young, they put on weight. But my, my, myself, every single morning, for every, every year, I jog for three miles every morning just to keep myself, my brain sharp and keep the weight off. So you've got to do it, you've got to go the extra mile with your health. Yeah, indeed, it's not only the physical health, it's also the mental the health. The mental health, yeah. What they're saying now, Esteban, they're, they're saying you've got to have physical strength and mental strength. And what they find with mental strength, you've got to be the type of person who's working on your inside, working on your mind. To say too many people have negative thoughts all the time. They're always blamed, they're always envious, they're always jealous. And, and once you have a negative thought in your mind, it attacks your immune system. And the immune system is there to keep us strong and healthy and be alert and run a good day have a great life but once you have negativity the immune system gets weak and, and then once it gets weak and the immune system there to protect it from the colds and the germs and, and all the bad diseases and even the heart but once it's attacked by negativity so the top people around the world they realize I've got to think of positive thoughts all the time and once you have a positive thought the immune system gets stronger and they call that mental strength. So all the way through the day, top people around the world are continually thinking of affirmation, visualization. They don't blame, they don't criticize because they know it, it's making them weaker. And that's why they're successful all the time. That's why they're alert. But most people want to moan, they blame, they're jealous, and they're, they're always criticizing. And then the body gets attacked and they never achieve nothing. What I have learned is that either you have positive thoughts or negative that's thoughts. That's right. That's so right. you choose which one. That's you right. Have. If they call this the law of substitution. If you have a negative thought about anything about the future, you can substitute this immediately and have a positive thought. But it takes willpower. But the top people around the world are always using the law of substitution. I am the best. I can do this. I can overcome this problem. This is just a learning curve with me. And they do that all the time. And that's why they're successful. That's it. Also, for example, if you are in a situation that you decide to take a direction and suddenly you realize it's not working out, in that moment, uh, when do you say, okay, I have chosen the, the wrong uh, direction, I need to change, and what do you suggest to the people uh, to do in that case? Well, it's the old saying, you always learn from other people, and the biggest saying in leadership if you're going down the wrong road and you realize it, it's never too late to turn back. 
you forget your ego and this is me and politicians are doing this all the time they're realizing they've gone down the wrong road but no i'm not going to turn back i'm a politician i'm god and they're wrong I think directors and politicians are, 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 are lacking in skills and knowledge. They're not keeping up with it. Politicians should learn right. Especially with Brexit, we've gone down the wrong road. It's never too, once you go down the wrong road, it's never too late to say, I was wrong. I apologize, I'm sorry. And that's leadership. Richard Branson says that. The trouble with directors and politicians, they, they never say, I'm sorry, it's my fault. It's my mistake. They've always got to blag it, and things, and that's the real problem we've got in this country. In this and in many other countries. And all in many other countries, yes. For your also for your courses, you put in practice a lot of public speaking. Yes, public speaking. How did you learn uh, a proper? Communication, effective effective communication. It's like everything in life. Nothing can come overnight. If you if you want to achieve something, you've got to pay the price and the price price is education you've got to study all the time you've got to learn from other people you've got to be mentored but most people stand up in public and they try to blag it and the brain makes an impression in the first 10 seconds when a person stands up and he's doing a presentation at a conference or for the presentation for the contract and he hasn't studied how to stand up in public and eye contact and body language and get rid of his nerves the person says I don't trust this person. The waffling, I don't, the product sounds good, but I don't trust them because they haven't gone the extra mile to educate themselves. And it just goes on and people think, oh, did it do all right? You didn't do all right. That's why people are not are failing in interviews. I'm heartbroken to see students coming out of university. They spent all this time in university. They're in debt, 40, 50,000 pound. And they go for job interviews and the directors are saying, okay, tell us about yourself. I tell you what, stand up and do a presentation. And they go to pieces. After five years in university, nobody's ever come along and say, let's give you some training on how to present, how to pass an interview. It's diabolical, it's wrong. So business people, I've got to do the same now because the, the competition is ruthless. It is an essential skill if you want to stand out and you know, like promote yourself. So it, it's something that we don't uh, learn in, in the school usually unless it is a fo focus school on that. But it's, right. it's actually an essential skill. So uh, everybody should, skill, uh, yes. should yeah. learn everybody. and practice. Yeah. And how do you prepare your classes? Uh, when when you have the, the people there, sometimes you, you have different people, right? And different uh, positions, different Youth ages. Job, yeah. How do you prepare the classes and uh, well, we, make everybody happy? We realize education is everything, but we realize people are all different. Some people like to learn visual, or some people kinesthetic, they want to be involved, stand up, ask questions. Some people are just auditory. And that's the way the brain works. 45% of people are kinesthetic with me. Another 50, uh, another 50 percent and there's only a small amount of people who can sit there for hour after hour and just listen so what we do in our courses our master courses we teach with accelerated learning accelerated there's nine stages of accelerated learning so everybody on the course has been interact with kinesthetic visual auditory with the nine stages, and that's why people love our courses. They're involved all the time, but the big thing about our courses, people remember the knowledge for years later. It's not about training, it's about, can you remember the skills and knowledge? And we've got systems from Georgi Lazanov, how to train with accelerated learning, so people can get promotion from a good business and have the skills and knowledge years later. And you use those skills also uh, in radio, you have your uh, oh, me program in radio. Yeah, well, yeah. In that yeah. case, it's only auditory, so you only can communicate. Auditory. So mm -hmm. what I try to do, I try to get the visual. I'm telling people to close their eyes and visualize. And I've got a guest in today, so I use my radio show to entertain people with accelerated in, but to give them knowledge. And we have guest speakers. You have to come on on Sunday. It's every Sunday, and it's broadcast all over the world. What is the channel? It's Coast. 1079.com mm -hmm. 
I remember in uh, your courses, one of the, my favorite parts is when you say, okay, now we are going to relax, and there was some uh, relaxing music, and you, you say like, now imagine you are in a relaxed place, ah, right. a place that is, you are safe, nobody can hurt you yeah. there. I wonder, when you do that exercise for yourself, what did that place for you? Yeah, well, I like to go into alpha thesis state, and that's great for learning, that's great for visualization. So in all my classes, I want people to achieve their goals, really achieve them, but I want people to learn and get rid of the stress. So we start off with beta state, and the brain thinks it beats 20 beats a second, and when you're wide awake and you learn, once the Brock music comes on and I relax them down, suddenly the brain then goes into alpha state, that's 10 beats a second, and people are closing their eyes, and they start to feel relaxed, the stress goes away, then they go into theta state, now that's 10, five beats a second, and that's great time to retain knowledge or visualize the goals and the dreams and they see pictures of themselves like Muhammad Ali, like Nelson Mandela, they visualize, they used to visualize nonstop and the brain doesn't know the difference between reality or unreality, it thinks that's what we're gonna aim for and then the next one is delta state, that's when you're fast asleep, you've gone to things, but the brain is relaxed and this is a key to keeping yourself mentally strong, getting rid of stress, visualize your goals and of course retain knowledge once again most people are wandering around in a metal fog never thinking of doing that they seem to go to the subway watch coronation street incredible and then they wonder why they're not really millionaires and to be a millionaire is just financial freedom so you're looking you can look after your family and spend more time with your children with your partner but don't people would sooner do it the hard way the hard way and work long hours hope they're going to get a contract instead of doing it the proper way it's also a mindset to, to be a millionaire is not only like to earn money it's to have a mindset that you you are in that status to be a millionaire you've got to have a good mental strength and to find happiness and have peace of mind and that's the secret and all money gives you is financial free, just freedom of choice freedom to go to work freedom to see your family freedom to help the poor it is not having the money and going on big yachts and holidays, no. It's just having freedom, and that's what people should aim for. But they're only going to do it if they get mental strength and they educate themselves. Not hoping that, wishing, praying, I went to university, I went to school, or I went on a course three years ago. Those days are over. This is now a new world we're living in. This is the 21st century. But people have got to wake up from the mental fog and say, if it's to be, it's up to me. I'm taking responsibility for my life, my education, my business. You have mentioned before Nelson Mandela. What other people apart from Nelson Mandela have inspired you most? And also people and, and books. That That's a you. good question. There's many people inspired me. Of course, Richard Branson's inspired me because he had a vision and he has a mentor. He believes every business pe person should have a mentor. Any new student should have a mentor. He said, and uh, I'm working in Liverpool Football Club at the moment in Everton, and every player has their own coach who inspires them, tells them off, does that. But business people, oh, we know it all. I don't need a mentor. And they keep making mistakes. And they go into the family of, sorry, I'm only getting in at 10 o'clock. And mentors are there to guide you, inspire you, do the right things. Everybody needs a mentor. And that's why we train people up in our academies to be mentors, to help other people. I agree with that. It's, it's, uh mentors and also there uh, in the UK there are some programs accelerators and you know, that's right, they that's have right you, uh, yeah. workshops and with mentorships yes. and that is very useful yeah. I have been doing like a couple of them and very, yeah. very useful one here in uh, the Chamber of Commerce by the way um, so yeah but you forgot to say what just tell me one book that uh, you one find especially inspired I, 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 I think Think and Grow Rich, that, mm -hmm. that, that, that's a, a classic. Yes. That, it is a classic. And the power of the subconscious mind. Mm -hmm. People bought that, and this has been out for many, many years, but the power of the subconscious mind explains everything, how to have mental strength, how to have peace of mind, how to be a top person, a, a loving person, and how to get financial freedom. So it's two great books. I've, I've read many books over the years, many, many books. I imagine. Okay, um, 
can you tell me uh, one of your or more of your the biggest mistakes you have done in your career and Ooh. how would you do it if you have to start again or do it again if you well, the biggest things. mistakes of my career, when um, I, I would say yes, when I was in Royal Summer Lions, I thought I knew it all. I was a manager and I just done the things other managers do. And I was putting people down, do it my way, hit the bat. And I was, I was a bad manager until somebody pulled me aside. And even before that, I think the biggest mistake I ever made in my life, all of us are traders of time. We trade our time. And they say, as you're in the 50s and 60s, you can see, have you been a good trader at the time? And I've been a bad trader at the time. I was spending my time with losers, moaners, whiners, watching the television, having a drink. And when you get to a certain age, you say, I've wasted my time. Instead, and once I learned this at 40, I said, from now on, I'm gonna make the most valuable use of my time. So I started to trade my time in reading books, going on seminars, get, and every day I spent three to four hours just on the education. And suddenly, I got promotion, I started earning more money. So the biggest mistake I had in my life when I was 18, I wasted my time every day just working in a factory, always more not getting the education, it's a wasted bit of time. So all of us are traders of time and the clock is ticking, the clock is ticking. And they do these surveys with people in the 90s and they say, what's some of the biggest mistakes? What's some of the regrets you've made in your life? And they would be say, I wasted my time in the wrong, wrong job, the wrong career, in the wrong partner. All that time I've wasted and I can't reclaim it back now. And they say, time is our most precious resource. Once it's gone, it's gone forever. And that's the biggest mistake I made for many, many years. I wasted my time when I should have been trading correctly. Interesting. You keep doing uh, your Master Coach certification every Monday and Tuesday? Yes, right? it's still mm -hmm. going on, yes. And uh, how come people do uh, to, to join this program? Well, to join is all they've got to do is contact our academy. We welcome everybody from people on the dole or people having a bad time or people just starting a business or managing directors. We make sure they all feel welcome. But it, then they've got to take responsibility. It's Monday, five o'clock to about half eight and, and Tuesday, five o'clock. And they're gonna get big qualifications, big certificates, CPDs, executive coaching certificates, which will make a difference in their life. And people like yourself, and once they come on, if they love it, it changes their belief, their confidence. We give them skills and knowledge that no other colleges and universities or other trainers give because of our experience with leadership and accelerating learning and coaching. Yeah, I, I, uh, there are people from different ages, like even students, Stu um, yeah. business people. That's or, right, they, we mix them together. Yeah. And yeah, it's not like only the certification that you get, but also, of course, all the knowledge, all the, all the experience, the practice that you have there with the uh, visual and kinesthetic, right, yeah. et etc. that you practice with other people, yes, coaching, etc. Yeah. And you have it now online available as well? Yeah, we have it online because people sometimes they can't come to our academy, but they come to, you know, because they like other, but we have it online because it's I learn it's incredible. They sit there with on the iPhone and they're getting skills and knowledge which will shock them, but will change their lives on time management, leadership, and making big decisions, taking responsibility. But they're going to get qualifications all in the comfort of their own home or on a trade or on an airplane. And but they're getting knowledge all the time, and that's trading your time. But people want to sit there and listen to bubblegum music, looking at you know Netflix and all that when they could be being educated and they get off the train or they get off the plane and they feel better they feel more positive and they can cope with life but people sooner just do it the other way let's do the things that failures do and failures just look at mu listen to music bubblegum music look at netflix got to get on to coronation street what a way and i'm criticizing myself here because i was adamant about that for 40 years of my life that was my life wasting me time but once I got into education and then the brain gets stimulated and it just keeps you going all the time you have bigger goals bigger dreams one of the advantages that we have uh, now nowadays is that 
we can choose we go to internet and we can choose any kind of material content that we, we want to yeah uh, to study and it's not, not only the channels that they, they offer in, in the television is that every you choose your, your own what you want to be educated how, how you want to be educated like every man is their own uh, university is a book called, called like that uh, yeah. so yeah what one of the things that you can do is educate yourself and always uh, until the moment that you die, you're always learning. Well so done. The, the, Excellent. The more you learn with the time, make it compatible with That's the right. uh, yes. healthy lifestyle, etc. But uh, I agree that uh, we must keep learning. All the learning. time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Tell me about uh, Liverpool. How do you think uh, it is going to be in the next years in different sense, like uh, business, economically, culturally? How do you see Liverpool? Well, uh, Liverpool is sitting on a great opportunity. Um, the saying in life now there's going to be massive change in the next two to three years there's going to be more change in three years time than our grandparents had in the in, in, in the lifetimes but we've got to grab change and what change is bringing is downsizing redundancies businesses are closing but what change is bringing is massive opportunities and that's where Liverpool is at this moment in time they're sitting on a massive opportunity the tourists are flocking in we're, we're nearly the third fastest growing economy in the UK but we've got to grab this opportunity and the only way we grab the opportunity ourselves the people and our city leaders have got to be educated they've got to they can't keep go making decisions that they used to do five years ago they've got to be alert use the creative mind so we're sitting on something and i'm just hoping we grab this opportunity but are they up to it are they i there's only three people in this city. Steve Rodham is the Metro Mayor. He come on our executive course and he spent time to learn and now he's the Metro Mayor. Gary Miller, he's another one. He come on all our courses. He wants to learn. He mixed with everybody. And Kennedy, he, he was another Lord Mayor. He was a brilliant, he come on the courses. And, they, they, and but do you see any other city leaders? No, we know it all. We'll rely on the skills from five, ten years ago, and that what ruined the city. We've got to have people who've been creative all the time, not arguing, not getting in politics, politics, and seeing the city. It's a fantastic city. This is our city, and we're sitting on something special. And all the whole city have got to grab the opportunity, and I hope it does happen. I hope. I hope too. Yes. Now. What about you? How do you see yourself in the future? You have already accomplished many things. So what else is, it is in your wish list? That's a bit <laughs> <laughs> No, what happened when I left the Royal Sun Alliance and this old shareholder who don't ever let your library burn down, I decided then through reading, through education, through mentoring, I decided I'm going to change people's lives. I've got all these skills, all this nonsense. I've had so much hurts and failures in my life. So I decided to have my own mission statement, and this was over 20 years ago, and I stood on stage, me and my big mouth, and said, my mission statement is to inspire, train, and motivate one million people around the world, and I'm still on that journey now. That's why we've been to Africa, Kenya, we've been to Australia, definitely Abu Dhabi and the beautiful India and that's why we've got online learning. So I will never, never rest till I achieve that one million. It doesn't matter what your age is and most people, once they have a mission and a vision, it keeps them motivated. I wonder how many are left? <laughs> oh, you naughty boy. Well, we're trying to keep, we have done well over the 20 years. We have done very well. And with our online learning, that's helping. But I've got to say this, when we, when we were in Kenya, we used to be coaching seminars, 200 people at the time, and in the end, the universities, they used to queue up, so there was thousands and thousands. So we're doing quite well. We're nearly, nearly, nearly up to half a million. Is that okay? So, so John Haynes is going to be around for a long time. That's why I'm asking people to come on my courses. Let me mention them. their their names goes down, and the once when once we get them in, we'll have a celebration like never before. You also offer to be associated with the International Coaching Academy, so other people can deliver the the courses that they, can uh, the, as a master coach, etc. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How can they do that? 
Well, there's two ways. We can train them up, but people like to have control of their own destiny now. They want to be entrepreneurs. So we'll train them up. It's a franchise and they can own their own coaching academy under our brand. They can train people up themselves, inspire people, help people, but it'll be their academy. Imagine it, this is my academy. I'm gonna teach you skills and people love that, having their own coaching academy, leadership academy, accelerated learning academy. They too can do what John Haynes will go around the world and then we're training people up to do that. John, it has been a real pleasure to have you here. Thank you, Esteban. Thank you very much for coming, coming uh, along. And well, I wish you all the best as, I as usual. I wish you all the best. Uh, see you around Liverpool. Yeah. We Thank do. you, mate. And as ever, you fly with your eagles and no more scratching with your nasty naughty turkeys. That's it. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Thank you. I hope you have enjoyed the interview as much as I have done. See you in another video. Bye bye.